Is it? No, it's okay. So, um, for people here for the first time, welcome. Who's here for the first time? Yay, good lot. So, that's a crew of people with really bright blue polo shirts and one, where are you guys from? Very good. Why is one of you wearing black and the other blue? Were you a leader with the black? With the leader. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so thank you for being here. So the talk today is a little bit like why why do you what our style of Dharma is, why do we do it this way? Something like that. We have a catchy title, like, do I have to do it? Because <laughs> we, we do some things like that you might not run into here in America. <clears throat> so I'd like to greet people that um, I don't know what camera I'm on. This camera right here? Yeah, so I'd like to greet people who are attending uh, video <laughs> style. Uh, Zoom style. I don't like to say remotely because I don't want people to feel remote, right? So thank you for being here um, physically, but, and, but present also by appearance. So in our tradition, we, we accept and love appearances too, right? <laughs> so sometimes I'm looking at the... Um, my uh, laptop called Perseus here. So uh, that gives me, and it's nice and big. So I, uh, it's nice to see there's a lot of good attendees all the way from um, Pennsylvania. So thank you. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so our fundamental view, like our ground or starting point, we call um, Dzogchen. Um, great completion. So we start from a place where um, every, everything is liberated and okay. That's the starting ground. So we don't start from bad, wrong, stupid, and then try to fix it from there. We start from inherent richness and uh, wakefulness and start from there. Yeah. That's fundamental. <clears throat> Of course, there are confusions and problems, but the problems uh, from our side are, if they're real problems, are solvable. So that's really good news, right? If it's not solvable, it's not a real problem. That's important. It's Buddhist logic. You know, some things aren't solvable, like, but, you know, there's day and there's night. That's not really a problem, right? It's not solvable. Gravity, not problem. <clears throat> However, confusion is a problem. So we are here to clarify confusion, generate compassion, be a benefit, you know, do something. So I describe the temple here primarily as a chaplaincy temple, chaplaincy program. <clears throat> That's not... Um, a traditional role in traditional Asian Buddhism. So um, most of the um, Tibetan teachers who have come here, they have to say, what's a chaplain? <laughs> um, generally a chaplain, of course, in um, Western traditions uh, is uh, an ordained person who's, or could be, um, like deacon, kind of semi-ordained, doesn't have to be fully, like who goes out into the community. So not just coming to a church or a cathedral or a synagogue or, or something, but actually goes out to the community and serves a uh, school, an institution, or, or just uh, uh, the populace in general. So the training program here has all the traditional trainings with the additional, like, I want to be a community-based temple, so um, so we don't have to draw everybody. Everybody doesn't have to come here. We go out and meet people where they are. 
it'll be a benefit. So uh, number, how many years ago now, like Jada Rimshe, uh, his first his first ordination ceremony for ordaining chaplains. How long ago was that, Susan? I <laughs> know we should look up dates. More than that, maybe, yeah. So, um, yeah. So I, I, I have one chaplain in training now, Greg Sells here today, so shout out. I know, that's typical, right? I shout out, like say, hi. So um, uh, the chaplains here already, and Greg too have completed the um, foundations course, um, an online course that was through um, John Young in London. Um, I don't think they're doing it anymore, but uh, you know, we have to find maybe a similar online course because as chaplains, we have to be educated too, right? Are they starting up again? That's good news. That's really good news, yeah. And then, you know, I want chaplains to have some psychological training too, you know, because that's uh, necessary to work in hospitals. And so that's mainly working with me too, you know, not like I'm requiring people to get another degree, but, you know, some people are going on to get a psych degree because that's the lingua franca to work in institutions, really. Maybe a nursing degree or something, but, you know, if you have some background, you can talk to um, a bunch of different uh, uh, services and institutions in the West, and they recognize that you have, you know, some background. Um, so we, as chaplains, we don't always, uh, we're not just here to promote um, religious dharma, we're just here to be of service and help people to um, alleviate suffering, right? So Buddhism doesn't have a, you know, a corner on <laughs> relieving suffering, right? It's just, we do our best to be awake to ourselves and others and be a benefit and spread some joy and bliss and be, you know, skilled. So that's why I said we're professional bodhisattvas. So that's one definition of uh, chaplaincy, professional bodhisattvas. We have the skills and the training so we can work with um, institutions and organizations and screwed up situations and messed up people. And we, we're not just talking to ourselves, right? Um, lines are as easy, you know, Lama's easy. Everyone has, you know, this very set, you know, you have these are the rules or this is the setup, right? Um, middle Way Health and Middle Way Health Foundation is difficult. People don't come in going, I agree to do these kind of precepts. I agree to do meditation. I agree to this worldview. You just totally have to meet people where they are. Middle Way Health Foundation, particularly where people don't have any insurance support or monetary support and may be desperate. So you just meet people where they are. So that does take training. If you don't have any training and you try to meet people where they are, it can be like jumping in to save someone drowning. That can be dangerous, actually. So we need we need the training. So this is like a training to fall like that. But also fun. We have parties and we do expressions. You know? <laughs> so training, training isn't, you know, so we're lighthearted. But so the many of the rituals here and the artwork is to stimulate our imagination. Um, we need a lot of imagination, uh, not only to have a sense of buoyancy and, and fun ourselves, but also to uh, be able to have many different avenues to help others. Most of the time for people, imagination gets some stuck, right? It's kind of delusional fantasies, <laughs> like who we think we are, usually <laughs> some delusional fantasy, right? But in our tradition, Vajrayana, which means like indestructible way or tantrayana means the way of continuity, then we learn to use fantasy and imagination in a positive way. Because every time we meet with someone, uh, they do not conform to um, exactly the way um, any uh, set treatment plan or dharma plan works, right? <laughs> uh, they, you know, you think, okay, they're going to, I, I've got all this training and then they're going to conform to this, but they don't fit into Dharma categories. They're not going to fit easily into 
DSM five categories, you know. So we have to like, oh, we we have to be imaginative to be a benefit, right? So one of the strengths of our tradition is we have a lot of skillful means or a lot of different uh, approaches, uh, but primarily we teach people how to be present with uh, things as they are, but also understand that the way reality is, is it's there and we bring something to it. It's called the middle way. Things are there, well, something here, like in the room, but I'm bringing my own version with me, right? You guys are my version of what's here and I'm your version of what's here. Isn't that so? <laughs> if we don't acknowledge that, then we either are lost in our projections or are under the dangerous um, presumption that we don't bring anything to the situation at all. We're just clear headed. That's dangerous, right? <laughs> we're always bringing something. So, but if we're clear about what we're bringing, then uh, we can really be a benefit to others. And if we're clear of what's there when we arrive. So the chaplaincy training, I'm really happy. Uh, and, you know, we need more. So I, I am very busy and I can't always respond. Luckily, Susan was able to go out and respond to a, uh, you know, um, a student uh, a couple of weeks ago. Um, but I, I, I couldn't go in person, you know, so uh, it, it's nice to have, you know, more, more chaplains coming up, you know. Um, we all have busy lives and then chaplaincy can be structured, like going, going to UCD and, and meeting with people at set times. But lots of times we get calls, you know, out of nowhere as Patty knows, like, you know, can you come over right now, <laughs> right? <laughs> you know? and I go, well, no, I can't come over right now. I'll, I'll send prayers. Usually uh, in Asia, um, high lama like myself, lineage lama is not gonna just go out and visit unless somebody's really well known, to tell you the truth. Uh, and then, you know, so they'll send an assistant out, you know, like that and um, representative and, sometimes with like blessed substances and or here's a practice that that you know special like that so we were able to do that this time um but you know i'd like to do more of that it's it's really cool you know and visiting people at home or in the hospital and it's you never know exactly what's going to happen isn't that so a little different you know here's a little bit predictable let's to get people together at the same time same place say the same things sit up straight, be nice, you know, you, you need some rules. But when you enter someone else's territory, you know, it's kind of like you're on their couch, right? And you pick up their dog hair on their couch. <laughs> like that. <laughs> Where here we can say, there's no dog hair on her. <laughs> you know, here's how we do things, you know. But when, when you enter someone else's space, even if it's a hospital room or, or you know, like that, then um, you know, you're somewhat surrendering to their situation and you're meeting them where they are, which is totally good, you know, for their practice, right? Totally for our practice to expand our hearts. It's really good. Of course, we don't have to be ordained chaplains to be a benefit. We're just bodhisattvas. So we can say, yeah, I'm just visiting a friend and bringing food and helping like that. But if we say, okay, I'm doing chaplaincy, presenting Buddha Dharma. Then, then of course we have to have a certain kind of training, um, particularly um, in a personal training, you know. So um, I'm not thrilled with um, online courses or or even brick and mortar places where people just get a degree and then they don't have any uh, supervision or they don't have any mentoring going forward, right? There, there are some some traditions like that, like. Um, a chaplaincy program, I think, um, is still going on in Redwood City, you know? I'm not sure, so, yeah, good. Um, uh, of course, you know, people have gone through that. I'm just wondering if, you know, they continue to follow up, you know, and people stay in touch, right? Because that's kind of a thing. Last time people get their degree or they get their title or something and they're like, okay, bye. You know, but the real work is 
um, when we start working, uh, then we need a, a peer group, a consultation group. We still need some guidance. So just getting the graduate degree um, isn't enough, right? So uh, getting licensed isn't enough. So at Middle Way Health, of course, we have an ongoing consultation group, which I'm glad is well attended. So, you know, we do need kind of like chaplaincy consultation group, you know, need to stay in touch, right? Because um, this does uh, usually things go very well, you know, people say, oh, I'm so glad to see you. But uh, sometimes we hear horrific things and then sometimes um, unexpected things happen, right? You know, so it's it's not easy when, you know, we go to help people and they go, you're not here to help, you're here because, you know, somebody told you to come here and you don't give a shit about me. And, you know, sometimes people are really in desperate need and their their anger and disappointment come out, right? So it's not always a lot of fun either, right? So we need that support from peers and colleagues and say, yeah, that's, let's, let's hear what happened like that. So... <clears throat> uh that's that's something that's missing sometimes you know as people lose touch with their training programs and they don't keep um their cohort together as we call it professionally <clears throat> nurses are actually better at that because nurses um generally don't work alone right you got to be with a group you know um so nurses are very generally um unless they're stuck in a little office somewhere as a nurse practitioner, they're generally working together, but uh, Dharma people sometimes get too isolated. So I'm glad we have this here and we can we can share, do some kind of um, maybe uh, some chaplaincy um, consultation group, something like that. Mm -hmm. So all the rituals here and all the different prayers are here so that we expand our heart and we become more skillful. Otherwise, why do them, right? Well, I probably would do them anyway because they're fun. So, <laughs> <laughs> so not everything has to be practical, right? It doesn't have to be always practical. So a lot of the things that we do here are just because they're fun too. Just have to, you know, point that out. Otherwise, it becomes grim and kind of serious. <laughs> uh, the other model that's different about this temple is um, um, I've tried to, or I'm not tried. Well, I feel tried. Tried to foster um, a um, uh, group kind of group practice, right? So, uh, so we have you know, uh, Lamas and Rinpoche's and uh, that are connected with us on a regular basis and, you know, encourage people to take teachings from them and have a, a group thing about it. So it's not like it's all me. Of course, ultimately, I have to have some direction and be a char in charge. I mean, that, that part's a responsibility. But the vision is, is that um, people here have our... Uh, you know, receiving teachings from from teachers that basically have the same approach, the same kind of realization, but have their own um, particular uh, style, right? Otherwise, you get too attached to one style, too much, right? So, uh, Sarah J, like you have different teachers. Of course, you have Abbott, who rarely tells you what to do, but you might have. As Luntuk has found out at Sarah J, you have about maybe 10 people telling you what to do. So who do you pay attention to? Well, um, it depends upon the circumstance, but you have to pay attention to your own intelligence. So it's not a cult. You have to at some point kind of go, well, I'm gosh, I'm hearing some different things from different teachers. You know, well, you have to integrate it. That's part of it, because that's real life. And then you take responsibility for your decision. Otherwise, it's kind of like blah, blah, Lama, blah, blah, Ramshe, blah, blah, Abbott told me what to do. I'm just doing it. So, you know, screw you. People do that. They play that game. 
but in our dharma, we we take responsibility. Like we got teachings from this person. Dalai Lama said this. Personal teacher said this. Another personal teacher said this. My roommate <laughs> said this. I've decided to do this, and I'm taking responsibility for it. This is important. Are you guys getting this? So it isn't. It isn't just like, well, I'm just, you know, I'm just being good German, following orders. You know, we're 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 taking. You know, we're we're having to integrate it, and our karma is our own karma, right? So I can't. I'm not. I'm not going to save you guys from your karma. It's not a salvation religion. Sometimes we say savior us from like. Tara or something like that, because she's so quick, you know, that's that quickness aspect. Um, but it's still, uh, when we say savior for Tara, it means like quick, but it doesn't mean like suddenly your karma is going to be eliminated. Buddha's not omnipotent like that. Otherwise, because the Buddha's emphasis and uh, mind and compassion are unlimited, everyone would be instantly free Lined and we wouldn't have to get together. We could be at the beach today. All right. <laughs> or in the mountains, wherever you want to be, with your lover. I don't care. But you know, so uh, but um we have to work through our own cause and effect karma. So ultimately we're we're still responsible for our own stuff. You know. We're not, you know, uh harsh that way we're not like well sorry shit happened to you that's your problem we we help but um the choice is is within right like anybody here could just walk out bill had to walk he's got something to do but like it's okay people just walk out you know you can stay or walk out free right yeah like that <laughs> that's important so now 11 40 we we should um have short discussion before people get too bored or thirsty or anxious you know <laughs> like that well that means someone starts with the microphone and <clears throat> I would say questions, um, comments, and complaints. Keep the complaints short. No however. complaints. Um, I, I was curious, how do you get your referrals for the chaplaincy? Uh, you know our number's on the website. And for a long time, like UCD's note about us, um, different hospice programs, um, you know, so they filter in. If, if we actually advertise more, they would there would be more um, calls. And of course, the problem is, you know, then if you can't meet the expectations, then, you know, you're letting people down. So that that's a tough one. So, um, I mean, if we really broadcasted, then uh, some people would be pretty busy like that. I'm into doing that. I mean, eventually, that would be, that's a good goal, right? I mean, that's, that's totally a good goal, but... Yeah. Sutter to some ex Sutter to some extent and, and a few hospice places and yeah. But people can, you know, find us. I I became the first Buddhist chaplain in the state of California for the um Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation. Um, mainly because I was the only one that called them back. They called all the Tip Kendall was his name, and, and they, he called every single uh, Buddhist organization in Northern California. No one called him back. That's not a judgment. It's just we all get busy, right? So it's a big commitment. It was, so I did chaplaincy at the prison for 10 years. Prison work is a, a total different kind of weird chaplaincy work, which um, is, is good to do, right? It, it is. It's, it's good work. Like um, recently, I was I was <laughs> I was on the treadmill. Of course, I'm watching TV. Okay, so I'm on the treadmill. <laughs> you know, Shawshank Redemption comes up. You know, and Old Folsom looks like Shawshank Redemption. Totally, totally. You know, 
people milling out in the, you know, like that. So um, the, the, there are really incredible people that have created the karma to be in prison, but also created the karma to liberate themselves in prison, you know, so that's a whole thing. Yeah. <clears throat> Some clarifications. What is Sarah J? Oh, Sarah J's um, our monastery in southern India. It, it, there, um, there are two actually monasteries: Sarah May, Sarah J, and there. There's probably about you know six thousand uh, monks in this kind of university village. Thank you, and um, <laughs> I. Um, just wanted to ask him, what's the difference between bodhisattvas and bodhicittas? Bodhicitta is the, the spirit, and bodhisattvas um, the identity. Thank you. I shouldn't say person, you know, because bodhisattvas are not actually persons. Bodhisattvas are strange kind of non-identity identities. Yeah. No, I was just going to um, follow up to what you were saying, how we bring chaplaincy into the community. Um, I got Lama's permission, of course, first, but the Red Cross is one of those areas that Lama has had some experience that they don't have a lot of Buddhist representation. So just to kind of be able to bring that to the table within individual disaster care which is somebody whose house just caught on fire an apartment building fire um it's one organization as you talked about yeah. right for our accumulation where also i worked with the service to armed forces and weekly do casework that involves deployed service members and dealing with the four sufferings typically an emergency communication message is going to be in the context of a death Right. So it's real imminent suffering um, that's not a transient problem. And to be able to have a process to work with that service member and then here locally within the California Gold Country region, which is most of California, to be able to work independently and really at the micro level mm -hmm. with that family. So it's a way to bring chaplaincy into the community real time at a really big broad reach with that label of right chaplaincy or Buddhism that, that does go along with it, but no labels, no labels. We're just helping people. We're just helping people. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Yeah, good. Thank you. You first. Okay. I saw your hand first. So. Yeah. yeah. My, my real question I wanted to figure out is um as after listening to Dam, um what is the best way to give back to like I guess your community or your Buddhist community? Because I know for one, my background is pretty much social work as it is. And uh <laughs> yeah, and I'm actually working on getting my degree as a chemical dependency um uh, counselor. So I figured I wanted to find another way to transfer out of what I was doing because social work was starting to piss me off. And trying to deal with um drug and alcohol. It's actually fun the things people tell you. I mean, so I mean, for that, that's kind of like trying to figure out like, is there a way to tie in what I'm doing in essence with this community? Mm -hmm. uh, just show up. Huh? Yeah, showing up. That's it. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. So, um, th there's you know we're we're using verbs and nouns and language and information, but. Uh, you know, so much of the truth and the Dharma is just uh, what we absorb energetically, what we absorb over time, what we, you know, what I notice, the quality of people's relationships. So, um, uh, you know, Buddhist enlightenment was uh, everything is uh, radically interdependent. So, uh, I like to keep that in mind because sometimes when we're talking, you know, we're thinking, well, we're a person just interacting with others. And that's true, of course, um, on a very relative level, but um, bodhisattvas are um, 
uh, identities that uh, aren't persons in the normal way, because we realize we're a part of a, a matrix of uh, ecology of mind, right? Uh, so we, we, we have a, a interconnected viewpoint. And the only way to really do that is not to say, well, we're all connected, but to actually like show up. So that's why generally <laughs> when people ask about the program here, you know, sometimes senior students will say, well, you just kind of show up. <laughs> um, if people are profoundly disappointed that way, then then they probably don't belong here. But, you know, because most of the time people want, well, I want information. And so I do say, well, here's, here's uh, you know, an online course or here's some books to read, because, of course, we do need information also. But, um, you know, in, information isn't enough, you know, just, you know, and then we work it out through our relationships, yeah. La, la, la. Good question. Thank you. Yeah, I have a question. So yeah. I was thinking about from um, a nursing medical background and the job that I do. Yeah. You know, we hear that somebody's coming in that's really sick and we all kind of descend, you know, there's a group of people and we all kind of mm -hmm. know what our role is and we all have a job to do. And I was thinking about it from a Dharma perspective. You know, if somebody is struggling, you know, in the Sangha, maybe would it, what do you think about like going over to the person's house with several people and doing like medicine Buddha or doing Tara? And I was thinking from my own perspective, you know, I would have loved that, you know, when yeah. I was really struggling. And part of it is you have to be able to say I'm really struggling. Right, right, right. But having a group of people come over and just doing practice, you know, maybe in the living room or something. I mean, what do you think of that? Yeah, that's the way to do it. Yeah, totally. Yeah, thanks for bringing that up because uh, that that's the way you know I learned from my teacher and teachers. Like they just say, "Okay, we're going, we're going over here and doing this now, right?" So um, it's just wonderful to show up at someone's house and you just kind of, you know, love bomb them really. <laughs> <laughs> that's true you know that's right that's right yeah yeah right yeah it is resources and you know we're we're still we're a very energetic temple because we we're doing something every day but we're also you know small in numbers but um it, it's always better for a chaplain to um, uh, lots of times, particularly when visiting in a home to go with a partner or, you know, something like that, because then, you know, you can kind of trade off and help each other. But yeah, that's the best thing is, you know, sometimes, you know, we just go as a group and you go, we're just going to uh, chant 21 Tars for you and, and we're bringing you some food like that. So, yeah, I mean, that, that's the way to do it. Um, totally um, like that, saying, saying over them, you know. So that has really correspondences with, of course, a lot of Native American traditions here and other traditions, right? Sometimes Western Buddhists um, are a little bit too individualistic, you know, or too, I can joke about it because I grew up Presbyterian, too Presbyterian about it. Like, well, I don't want to bother them. And, <laughs> you know, you know, you know that might be too much, you know. So, I mean, so we go over, if, if people are too spun out, then we stay just a short time, leave something. You know, it was traditionally like you go with a blessing cord or go with scripture or go with a transitional object, as we'd say in psychology. You know? <laughs> yeah so i think as as we grow and blossom then you know people can arrange that you know so i was i have hope and i'm assuming that you know people get together and do practices on their own you know it isn't just like what happens here you know a lot of times people say hey i'm doing this you want to come over so people do you know different practices you know um on their own too right Otherwise, it, it, it stays too, you know, too building oriented like that. Once again, uh, you don't have to be 
ordained chaplain to be a bodhisattva, right? And just have the motivation. Um, it's just, we have extra training and uh, then um, in a sense of responsibility, right? And then what really makes us professionals is then we're, we're willing to take some of the blame because that will come, right? You know? <laughs> <laughs> or if you're just kind of amateur, are you going, look, I was just trying to help, don't blame me, you know? But uh, if we're professionals, you know, we're, we're just like when Geshe Gendon was here, you know, we say, okay, I, I get it. You weren't really, you weren't very happy, you know, with the way things went or the care you received. Um, I want to hear more about that. The amateur might say, when I say amateur, I don't actually use that. You know, the untrained person might, because we're all amateurs, but, you know, might say, um, well, I don't know what they're talking about. I tried my best, so F them, you know. But as professionals, you know, we're, we're going to say, hopefully, I, I'll have to swallow or breathe a few hard times when people go, this has not been helpful at all. I've seen you for two years. I'm worse. <laughs> and, I, and I'm reporting you to the board, you know. I mean, that, that when I'm calling the Dalai Lama or something, who's your teacher? You know, I'm going to tell on you. So, of course, that, oh, okay, tell me more. It sounds like you, some of your needs weren't met. Um, I'm interested. <laughs> so that's really hard. It takes a lot of support to do that kind of thing, to hear negative feedback. Um, and that can be um, for some chaplaincy things or therapy or just being a helper. That can be um, a learning experience because, um, in my experience, usually when people complain, they they are then you know blaming them again. Like I used to get together with my supervisor at, at Sutter, and we used to laugh. Like mental health is the only profession where when it doesn't work out, you you blame the person. <laughs> car didn't fix your problem. That's not my problem. I didn't fix your car. You know. So uh, so we try not to do that. You know. To, oh didn't it didn't work right does everything work all the time no 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 it doesn't like gosh that didn't work um so we, we go well it didn't work and we can try something else or i'll get you a referral right that's being a professional too you know say well that didn't work you know why don't you go talk to so and so same way in dharma things not not one thing works all the time things work for a while and then they stop working who knows, right? But people's karma changes, so we have to move with it like that. It's interesting. Yeah. And any questions or comments from um, the world of video appearance? No? Yes? Where are you? Oh, Ellen. Well, I'm at Ellen. I was just going to say that Jado Rinpoche did the chaplaincy vows on November 10th, 2018. Okay, great. That was, yeah, very good. Thank you. Yeah. That's good. yeah. Lama. Seamless. Lama. Yeah, Lama. Uh, so, how do you politely avoid nursing and physical therapy people who are going to bless you until you have Christian reflux? You can't hit them, so how do you get rid of them politely? You tell them you're Presbyterian. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, well, you know, we can start with being polite, like, you know, thank you, I have another tradition that I, you know, another spiritual tradition. So we're being polite, but honest. Um, or we can say, you know, just thank you. Let's move on. Um, I told them you know, my some, mom was going to smack them. A little off. pushy, you know, and then, but um, maybe, you know, but, uh, you know, I, I sometimes I just say, you know, like, you know, leave what you would you like to leave some literature here but I, I i need to do something else now you know like time is always a good you know barrier right so 
thank you. That I, I I don't have time for a further discussion, or our time is up, and or now, you know, not like we got to end soon, but now now I'm going to stand up, and you're walking out of the room, you know, something like that, or it's time for you to leave now is kind of direct still can be polite right thank you you know our our session you know if you're receiving something from somebody and they start going down a path that that you're not supporting say um you know thank you but our you know we need to we're ending the session here not we need to we're we're ending the session here or, yeah we're done yeah just like that yeah um Generally, if you get into debates or attacking, then um, you know if people are very insistent, then they're ready for that, right? So generally, you don't want to go there, right? But you have a good sense of humor, Elizabeth, so you can um, <laughs> you could come up with something. I'm calling the police. You know, I mean, you could come up. <laughs> You're going what? <laughs> <You know? laughs> No, don't say that. <laughs> but you know, usually it's good to just say, you know, I'm we're done, our time is up now. I'm you know, I'm doing something else now. Like, like get your hands off me. I don't need something. Is that helpful? Nothing works forever. You know, sometimes, you know, you, you do have to be, you know, firm and maybe a little bit of a sting, you know. Yeah, you try not yeah. to hurt, right? Yeah, your time's up we're done here it's probably the best yeah that's probably the best yeah yeah okay good yeah yeah we need we need the mic doug yeah just want to add to that it was kind of funny uh, a couple of people came to my door a couple months ago to proselytize i said i really don't have any time but you guys have nice ties <laughs> <laughs> Because they had these two paisley ties, which I haven't seen for a while. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. I guess I don't know where that came from, but yeah. Yeah. So I mean, I, you know, generally, yeah, that's that's nice. You know, it's like I don't have any time, so it's it's nice you're pleasant looking and paisley ties. Could you give me one? No, don't. Have to. Okay. I just thought to make a, a small comment again from Doug. I think if you um, approach the people with kindness, like he said something nice to them about themselves, and if you come from a place of um, calm and you're not irritated, if you can keep your own self in a calm, non-irritated way, you will sound polite. You will not offend, and you can still give all the suggestions you said. But I think it's important that we're not carrying annoyance and anger or whatever about it inside ourselves. So right. I think that helps the situation a lot. Yeah, I agree. So, so we're talking about a little bit when, when people are becoming too much or annoying for us, right? But, you know, in Buddha Dharma, we always look at both sides. So of course there are times when we're too much for others too, right? So we have to be sensitive to that. Like, am I too much for you right now? <laughs> you know, or... Do I need to, you know, you know, you, you seem to be kind of drawing back, you know. So we're we're also sensitive because even if we just say hello to some people, that's too much, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Don't say hello to me anymore. That's that's an emotional burden. So uh, you know, we also have to be very sensitive. That's a big part of chaplaincy, like like how my, how we, you know, going into evaluation in the middle like how am i doing here you know is this is this working like that you know seeing if, if people are still receptive yeah how about you guys from christian brothers do you have to write a report on this thing kind of you were hoping to get an interview how are you how are you going to do that Oh, good. Susan will talk to him. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Didn't didn't it, didn't we? Was it a group from Christian Brothers last time? There was another. Yeah, we also had. So we're 
Yeah, so you, you follow on the heels of an earlier Christian Brothers group who were very um, uh, mature and kind. Did you know that? Uh, yeah, we I knew that. I asked my teacher about this. This is yeah. kind of a school report, but yeah, we're happy okay. to be here anyways. Yeah, so how is CB doing anyway? Is everyone happy on campus and studying hard? <laughs> yeah, everyone's studying hard, so... Uh, college applications are coming up right now, so everyone's kind of locked into their grades. That's good. That's good. So, so is, is there still a little competition between Christian Brothers and Jesuit? You guys... <laughs> oh yeah, big rivalry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> good. <laughs> yeah. So I appreciate people's attendance today. So. Um, I'll be around here the rest of the afternoon, and um, some people might be staying for some snacks, right? I'm not cutting anybody off from a question, am I? I'm not, I'll just, yeah? Okay. So we can say dedication. Dedication. Due to the merits of these virtuous actions, may I quickly attain the state of a Guru Buddha and lead all living beings without exception into that enlightened state. May the supreme jewel bodhicitta that has not arisen arise and grow, and may that which has arisen not diminish, but increase more and more. In the land encircled by snow mountains, you are the source of all happiness and good, all powerful Chenrezin, Tenzin Gyatso. Please remain until samsara ends. May the teachings of the Buddha flourish, and may the upholders of the teachings remain forever. May all migrators achieve happiness, and may they fulfill all their temporary and ultimate goals. Lo Song, magical display of the deep awareness of all the victorious ones, merciful giver of a stream of profound and vast instructions to the fortunate migrators. Please remain always unperishing, unchanging, unfading. Avokteshvara, great treasure of objectless compassion. Manjushri, master of flawless wisdom. Vajrapani, destroyer of the entire host of Maras. Tsongkhapa, crown jewel of the snowy land sages. Losang Dragpa, I make the request at your holy feet. Does someone want to make an announcement about the film next month? Yeah. Um, yeah, there's going to be a film next month. What is it? <laughs> Saturday, November 12th. November 12th or 15th? Yes, 12th. Yeah, whatever. That Saturday is the 12th. 12th. Thank you. So you, you <laughs> um, the film is called um, Gratitude Revealed. It's an independent film. Um, so we're going to film it. I get we're going to show it in here. Um, it's about an hour and a half long and um there is an announcement on our weekly email but we're also going to add a registration link if um, just so we can get some idea in terms of how many people um, and we're going to ask for a uh, suggested donation of ten dollars a head but that's you know kids are free and come anyway you know um so it's going to be informal but um I thought it might be kind of a nice introduction to the holiday season, right? So it's right before Thanksgiving and Christmas and make us all feel good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good idea. Oh, right. This Wednesday at the Crocker, um, one of our Sangha members, Autumn Payne, is introducing and talking about how it inspired her as a video um, artist, a film called The Biggest Little Farm, which is just delightful. Sure. Say what? Yes, yes, at the Crocker Museum. Say what? I don't know, what time? Six, six o'clock. Thank you, yeah. Um, 
Anyway, it's a delightful, delightful film. And um, it was an inspiration to Autumn, who is um, a video artist of uh, some renown. She's really, really good. So um, you might want to go support her and see this delightful film. Yes. Anything else? <laughs> I, I'm uh, expressing my gratitude for the Dharma Center by mentioning uh, Donna, which is generosity. And so we have a box in the back. If you care to leave some money, totally up to you. And then if you want to come in the back for snacks, coffee, drinks, there's another uh, box there where you can leave uh, some generosity. It's uh, like clear plexiglass pillar. <laughs> yeah. I, I just wanted to mention also that Susan um, teaches a class on Saturdays, and I think this coming Saturday at 11, you have your class, Steps on the Buddhist Path, and that's a really wonderful class. Sometimes people want to know, you know, kind of like a discussion format and looking at a book, and so uh, if you have time on a Saturday, it's just a wonderful opportunity, so thank you. Uh, we're also going to uh, run on Thanksgiving morning. Run to feed the hungry. So, as a Dharma Center, yes. Geshe Damcho, that's correct. Um, Geshe Damcho is, uh, I don't have the dates in my mind actually, but it's on the roar. I think it's November 5th. Oh, Jesus. No, it's, yes, the first and third Saturdays. And he's teaching on what's called the three aspects of the path. And he's uh, a Mongolian, um, he has a Mongolian background, but he's uh, been trained at Sarah J, and he's a Geshe, which is a really high degree in our tradition. And he's really a, it's a warm person, sense of humor, and very knowledgeable. And I'm going to come because I have so much to learn. So if you want to join Geshe Damchu and me and whoever else here, that'd be wonderful. Thank you. We did it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> la la. Thank you, Lama. Thank you, Lama. Thank you, Lama. Hello, Portugal. Hello, USA.